there, it's Molly Reynolds and you're watching The Unicorn in the Room, where we examine the habits of the business world's most influential unicorns and learn how to use our own personal magic to achieve business success. Well, we're on the campus of GE today, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of innovation going on in here. But it's not all about the technology. Today we're going to be talking with Susan Peters, who is literally innovating the way that best business practices are done. Let's take a look at what she's doing. Susan, thank you so much for letting us, uh, you know, question you relentlessly about leadership today. That's great. I'm very excited. It's a topic I have passion for. Yeah. You know, we, we rolled up to the GE office today, and it looks so much like Hogwarts of Harry Potter. <laughs> It's, 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 well, it's, it's raining today, so it's got this sort of misty feel, but what is this place that we're in? Well, we're here in Crotonville, which is the nickname, if you will, for this campus that has been in the family of GE since the mid-1950s. And you have to give a lot of credit to the earlier leaders of the company because they bought this Institute of Management in 1954. And we started teaching leadership and leadership development here in the mid-1950s and have done so ever since. We're sitting in a place called the barn, in a, in a room called the living room, and we have really got multiple unique spaces on this campus. It's about 60 acres. We teach people here, and they can stay overnight here. It's an overnight campus with about 250 rooms, but we teach leadership everywhere in the world. Almost 75% of the people who attend a leadership course do it outside the United States. So we teach at our global research centers in Bangalore, Shanghai, Munich, Rio, and Abu Dhabi, in addition to here, just north of New York City. In many ways, it is the epicenter of the culture of the company, because when we want to think about leaders and culture, we do it here. And we often begin initiatives and ideas here at Crotonville. Now, GE has over 330,000 staff members. How do you create a culture in a company that's that large? It's a great question, Molly, and some of it is exactly what we've been talking about. We really believe in having uh, some connection at the core, almost a backbone, and we do that through having a shared set of GE beliefs, mm -hmm. which we manage to put out throughout the, uh, throughout the company. We translate that into 22 different languages, uh, and so it's all over the world. That's sort of a backbone. We have a common process for feedback and performance development. We have a common leadership curriculum, which as we just discussed, is delivered everywhere throughout the world. We, we really do believe that leaders help create the culture and that the culture helps create our leaders and that it's very circular and we are intentional about both of those. Mm -hmm. And recently, you guys have had a lot of big changes here and you've had to make a shift in some of your HR practices with respect to your uh, employee feedback. Can right. you tell us about that? Well, in many ways, the changes we've made in uh, a lot of our HR processes are an outcome of the changes the company is going through. So we've put our hands on some of the major levers that probably anybody would. We made a change in the summer of 14 to our executive bonus system and compensation structure to align it better with what the outcomes we wanted for customers. Mm -hmm. We made a, a major change. I don't know if I'd call it a change. We added a capability to our company and our culture by learning more from California, from Silicon Valley. We actually partnered with Eric Ries, who wrote The Lean Startup, and he has helped us really think about how do startup companies in California really think about the way they iterate and work, and we have built that into our behaviors and capabilities. We teach it here at Crotonville. We call it FastWorks, but it really is about how quickly you can iterate big products, and I think a lot of people never thought you could apply that to you know, big heavy machinery, locomotives, aircraft engines, CT scanners, right. but you absolutely can. And then finally we made a massive change and our, I, I suppose this will be never ending, to our performance feedback approach. Mm -hmm. So GE has been known for decades as a place for uh, a very robust performance management process. And over the last several years we've, using FastWorks, 
done some pilots, learned, iterated, and created a, an approach to feedback that is an app. It's based on a very simple tool that gives you feedback immediately, frequently, at any time. That feedback comes from all over, from peers, subordinates, your manager. You give feedback upward, sideways, downward. So we're all giving each other feedback. And the interesting thing is that we do it through two big lenses. What would we like you to continue doing? What would we like you to consider doing? So that way you feel a little bit less awkward about it because it's 100%. constructive. It's laid out that it's constructive. And really what it does is it allows the manager to be in a coaching mode. And that's really what most people want. Now we have a lot of startup founders watching right now and they don't have thousands of employees yet, but we want to start them off on the right foot. So where would you tell them to begin creating a thriving collaborative company culture? I think there are two pieces to that. One is where are we today? And no matter what size an, of an organization you have, a family, a, a church, a community, a, an institution, a country, there's a culture. There's a culture that's associated with that. So understanding what your current culture is, what do we love about our culture today? What's our honest evaluation of what it is and what do we love? What is our culture and those norms that we're not as proud of? What would we like that to be? I think that's one thing that's a starting point for anybody, no matter how many employees or people you have on the team. Uh, I think there's another piece to culture is seeing around corners. Where do you want to be in 2018, 2020, and what is it going to take to get there? And what cultural capabilities will it take to be there? And then you lay out a set of guiding principles. We call them our GE beliefs. There's five statements that we sort of have out there. They're part of the, the sort of zeitgeist of our company, if you will. And um, we build a lot of things off of that. And I think that's really the important thing is to be very intentional about culture and what you want to be. Okay, now say that they've done that and they're going down a certain path and they realize it's not exactly the right direction. How do you think you should identify that and go about fixing it? Well, I can give you some examples of the way we've done change when we see that something isn't quite going where we want to. And I, perhaps the, the point I'll reflect on and, and speak about is after the financial crisis, and at that time our financial services was over half of the company. Mm. We spent, you know, I think along with many other companies and financial institutions in the 2008, 2009 and beyond time frame, there was a lot of reflection going on. And uh, we really used it to think about what is it we want to be. We made several big changes. We really looked at what is the, the um, leader in the 21st century. What does it take to be a leader in a world that post the crisis had changed, but more importantly was changing as a result of um, globalization, technology, dispersed and virtual teams. I mean, there's just so much that changes, particularly as you start up and understanding that. And so we really reflected on leadership at that time. And one thing we did was we sent about 20 senior leaders out into the world to understand what does it take to lead in this new world that was changing at such pace. We sent them from everywhere from the China Communist Party School to the Boston Celtics to the Air Force to companies to small and large universities, really to understand what is leadership. So the lesson in that is go outside. Look outside your walls for what is happening out there. I was with a company here at Crotonville yesterday. We shared best practices. That's how we do it. We'll show you our stuff. You show us your stuff. And there was a ton to learn from them, particularly around how they're using technology in their early candidate experience and hiring practices. And we have some great ideas on that. They got some ideas on how they, we do succession planning and talent management and people reviews. And so I think it's a lot about getting out there and seeing, getting ideas from other places, seeing around corners, getting context. That's how you move forward in culture and be intentional about it. GE has a tremendous theme of leadership. You're not talking about the executives when you say leadership, you're talking about everybody. And you yourself have worked with all of these incredible leaders and are one yourself. What I'd like to know, as my last question, is what is the most important thing you've learned about leadership in your journey? Well, first of all, you said a piece of it, which is that everybody is a leader. I think that's a huge point to make. We, when we talk about leadership, we talk about every single person in the company. 
We believe that if you get a little bit better all the time, you get better because you get that great feedback or you watch a great role model or you go to a training course or you have a new experience or you're in a challenging job, that you will have higher expectations of yourself, higher expectations of the people around you, the people who work for you, and together we all rise. That's our leadership philosophy. Together we all rise. So my learning about leadership is that every one of us is a leader and that every one of us can and should and actually has the responsibility to continuously improve and get better. You know, leadership is a very intense personal journey into yourself and you have to take time to reflect and learn and constantly get better. That's the kind of person that we want at GE and that we really believe is a leader, those people who are constantly getting better and never stop evolving. That was so powerful. Thank you so much for that. I'm, I, this has just been such an inspiring uh, interview. Thank you for all of your great wisdom and for sharing it with us. Thanks so much. We, uh, we look forward to the ongoing conversation. That's right, leaders. You have a responsibility to yourself and to your company, not to be static, but to constantly grow and evolve so that you can have the best company there is. And for more unicornial tips, please visit our website at theunicorninetheroom.com or subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.